Good morning, ladies and gents. My name is Simon Brown uh, from Just One Lap, and I'm joined this morning as well with uh, Ryan Basido. He's Head of Index Portfolio Management at One Invest. We're going to be chatting around their offshore products, but most notably, we'll be focusing on US, uh, tech US. There's some US dollar there as well, S&P 500. Uh, then we've got a, an SRI Global as well, and then the sort of an, an EM Asia and we'll talk around all of those different. Uh, Ryan, appreciate the time this morning. Uh, I want to kick off with, I suppose, the juggernaut index in the room, which really is the S&P 500. And I know it's 500 stocks from the US, but it is, I mean, you know, it's Apple. I, I'm sitting on an Apple Mac right now. They sell iPhones into, into China. In, in many senses, it is the kind of best of the global. Hey, Simon. Thanks for having me again. Um... Yeah, 100% right. Eh? Uh, I guess Apple, as we all know, uh, smartphone manufacturer, personal computer manufacturer, wearables, accessories, etc. Uh, I mean, market cap of two and a half trillion dollars. Uh, you know, the, look, the, the bigger guy in the room as well is also Microsoft. Well, right? of course. Uh, Three trillion dollars. I think that's the biggest market cap at the moment on the S&P 500. Uh, we all know who they are, you know, a big, many, big, big software manufacturer. Uh, maybe just to miss, just to add a little bit of color to to why we're talking about the size and market cap of some of these stocks. Uh, you know, Nvidia as well will be another big name that we can probably touch on a bit later. At Two trillion dollars. Uh, if we look at the S and P five hundred from an index construction point of view, uh, it it as the name says, it looks at the biggest five hundred stocks in the U.S. Uh, very large firms and ranks them by market cap. So size does matter on, on the S&P 500. Uh, if we compare that to another index such as the NASDAQ 100, for example, uh, that isolates, uh, the NASDAQ 100 index isolates its selection criteria, selection universe to stocks just listed on the NASDAQ. Yeah. Uh, whereas the S&P is, is everything in the US. Um, and there are, there are differences between the two. So both are market cap weighted. Uh, as as said, uh, the NASDAQ does apply also a liquidity filter and is, again, isolated to stocks just on the NASDAQ. So therefore, you'll see some differences in, in which stocks pop up on, on the radar between uh, those two big hitting indices uh, in, in the U.S., uh, but yeah, S and P five hundred largely. You expect to see the the stocks with large market caps featuring quite predominantly in in that index. And it is the case, and it's the same. It's the same with our local top forty as well. It's the bigger you are, the more weight that you have. Which is, I mean, yep. if we go back thirty years, there probably wasn't much tech. Even twenty odd years of the tech bubble, they weren't yet. It was, if I recall correctly, it was the likes of General Electric, General Motors, and, and the oil majors. Yeah, hundred percent correct, and and it might be viewed from from two different angles. So, as a stock gets bigger, uh, its weight in the index starts to increase, and then you know there's there's some risk concerns perhaps in terms of concentration risk in the stocks. Mm -hmm. But you know, on the other hand, the bigger the stock is, the more tradable it is, uh, the more liquidity there's out there in the market. So it comes with with pros and cons. But uh, indices have come quite a long way in terms of their construction criteria. So indices is just, it's a set of rules, uh, like constructing a portfolio, it's a set of rules to construct a portfolio. And one of those one of those rules is capping, for example. Yeah. Uh, some of these indices introduce capping in order to deal with the concentration risk in them. Um, so if we if we look at, for example, the cap suites all share, uh, it caps securities, not just at, at individual uh, ticker level, but it looks at now group entity level. So it has evolved over the last two years to even include that. So uh, stocks that are issued from the same group, such as Investec PLC or Investec Limited, yeah. uh, your tens, your your NASPERS ten cent is all it's it's capped at a group entity level, not at a single stock level. So so there definitely is some some rules in place to help with concentration risk. Uh, risk. Uh, but as well as it's still giving you the the versatility of having very liquid stocks in there. Um, it has to be an index has to be tradable and investable, uh, which which we see coming through on something like the top forty, something like the S and P five hundred, MSCI World. They're all a massively tradable indices out there, even though they are market cap weighted. Yeah, on the S and P and it, it's it's global nature of it. Do we have any sense of if we look through? How much of of profits are generated in the U.S. versus the rest of the world? Because, of course, I mean, 
the stark reality is the US is what a, a quarter of the global economy. Uh, it, it's probably at the moment the strongest of the developed market economies in terms of unemployment, uh, uh, you know, GDP growth, notwithstanding the the five and a half percent rate from the Fed. It, it is a massively strong economy, and 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 when the Fed does one day eventually start cutting, we're only going to get stronger. Yeah, that Fed talk, Simon, uh, <laughs> doesn't seem to not feature any day uh, in the last few years, especially this year. And as we know, that's that's been kicked further and further down the road. But but so far, markets haven't completely jittered at that idea, uh, which tells me, to your point, uh, about the U.S. being a very strong, versatile economy at the moment, uh, basically full employment. Um, uh, corporate earnings are starting to, uh, to come through and not so far not being disappointing at all. Uh, to your point, they are very much a lot of those S and P five hundred companies do derive the bulk of their earnings locally from the U S. But mm-hmm. they are there are a lot of multinationals in that in that in in the in that index that are U S based. So so similar to similar to to some of our main mm-hmm. indices in SA, such as your top forty, uh, we do have a lot of companies earn on, on the top forty that are earning their revenue from offshore operations. Yeah, but in SA on the top forty, it's if not in excess of fifty percent of those earnings are derived from offshore operations, where the U.S. it's it's probably around the other way around. It's probably closer to a seventy thirty split, uh, but bulk of it generated from uh, from from locally in the U.S. Uh, but because they are na- multinational companies, uh, they do have a lot of offshore partners, uh, and therefore you see uh, whatever happens in the U.S. seems to impact the the, the majority of or the bulk of of equity markets across the globe. Yeah, uh, we're going to come to the slide in a moment in terms of of holdings and looking at those top ten holdings. And yeah, I I interact. I mean, it's Microsoft, of course, and 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 Apple and the like. But I mean, yeah, even Meta's there and 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 uh, Amazon and you know businesses that in southern tip of South Africa I'm using in many cases on a daily basis. I want to switch to tech because. So last year I did a, a best performing ETF for 2023 list, uh, and there was a the Infotech was there. I did a Q1 top performing ETF uh, was the Infotech. I did a five year Kagar compound annual growth, uh, and there sat the 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 the, the one investor that did Infotech. And 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 I think you know a one year return is lacquer, a, a three month return is lacquer. But truthfully, yep. it's the five year that really matters. We are we are long term investors, and that really has yep. been one of the standouts some of it's been currency sure because these are you know offshore assets back into the rands uh, but a lot of it has just been growth and we can i'll pull up the slide indicating that yeah. it is just it, it it's constructed different um and i want to touch on that but it has just absolutely delivered yeah simon just just out of interest while the slide is coming up uh, so another stock that uh, we probably not many of people have heard of is uh, super micro computer. Yeah. Uh, and, and they've done this quarter, they've done 255% in one quarter in dollars. Uh, if you look at it in rands, it's about 260 or 270%. So it's not, not too much of the currency coming into play there, yeah, but yeah. 255% in, in one quarter. Uh, and they are largely storage and networking all, all linked to uh, this, this AI revolution. And, and that's where you're seeing a lot of those that, that performance coming through over the last three to five years. In fact, if I'm a little bit more uh, stringent about it, uh, I'd say the last, let's, let's look at it in years. So 2021, 2022 was mostly, if I look at sectors in the US, was a lot of the, the top performers came from the energy sector. Uh, mm-hmm. And I guess that's coming from uh, that 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 post COVID reopened trade, etc. Uh, in really in 2023, we, and we saw Nvidia feature again as one of the top performers in 2022. But really in 2023 is where we saw a lot of the performance come through and the big boom in uh, in AI AI linked uh, securities. Uh, as you can see on the slide up there, uh, you know Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia in in the middle column. Uh, sales, Broadcom, Salesforce, all featuring in, in the top five, holding the top five weights in that Infotech uh, index. But maybe, Simon, before before I get down into any stock specifics, just to give the audience a highlight of why that S&P Infotech is different from the S&P 500. 
Yeah. Uh, even though they are, even though they're based on the same parent index. And what I mean by parent index is, is your selection universe, your, your the, the stocks that you can choose from. Um, what the what the Infotech, the S and P five hundred Infotech does is it it looks at the S and P five hundred uh, as its parent index, and then it isolates the stocks that are uh, did that are operating in the information technology space, and it uses a methodology called called gigs to do that, which is your your global uh, industry uh, classification sector. Um, so they look at they look at um, they look at what is the core business or what are the core industries that the stock uh, uh, stock derives revenue from and it starts to classify them in those sectors. So the S and P five hundred Infotech looks at just the information technology stocks, and then it applies a thirty five twenty weighting, which sounds a little bit weird, but what what that means is, uh, firstly, the index will rebalance quarterly, just like the S&P 500 does. Yeah. Uh, but additionally, it also looks at uh, monthly rebalancing. Uh, and it looks to see that if is if the stock that's the highest weight, so the stock ranked number one in terms of weight is greater than 35%. Mm-hmm. In fact, 33% to be accurate, it gives, up, it gives them about a 2% buffer, but let's call it 35% for rounding. So if it's greater than 35%, it caps the first stock at 35%. So it applies a 35% cap on the stock number one. And then the 20 is it applies a, it looks then at, is the second stock greater than 20? It applies then a 20% cap on stock okay. number two. Uh, and then redistributes according to the rest of the index. So what it guarantees you is no one stock is going to be greater than 35% and mm-hmm. no second stock then is going to be greater than 20%. Um, so it gives you some, some, uh, some, uh, risk diversification in inherently built in the index, um, and and some people may say, look, thirty five percent seems quite aggressive as well. But uh, you know, this index is not designed to be your core your core equity holding. Yeah, it's not designed point. to be the one thing you should hold uh, as your entire equity block. This is designed for a very niche specific exposure designed to be an add-on or to complement your core equity holding. So you should not be afraid of taking big tech exposure because this is what this index is designed to do, give you big tech exposure, give you exposure to big companies that that end up you know, buying out the little guys that are starting to emerge with new and greater technology and then drive that market higher. You want exposure to these big guys who can have that influence and an impact on the market. Um, so that's the, the the core difference between between the two indices. And I like your point there because I, you know, my core ETF is a is a global ETF, and I use global and I use uh, some S and P, and that gives me the the tail and the breadth of it. But then tech is a happening space, and and it probably always will be. I mean, some folks say tech might have its day. I I think yep. I, I, I we can debate that all day. But I, I use it so as, did, as so that did. The the guy that had the horse and didn't want to buy the car probably had the same problem, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, take... And he and he's still there with his uh, buggy yeah. and and uh, shoeing his horse. Um, I, 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 tech... Innovation innovation becomes you know mainstream technology at some point. The the analog to digital cameras, all of those, all of those, and, and the changes. Like, I mean, if you th- think Nvidia, I mean, I hold it once because it was a gaming stock in a sense, right? Because it was in the it was powering computers so we could play fancy games. Then it became a a crypto stock to a degree because it was powering the guys, the miners in Bitcoin. AI, yep. and and now it's an AI stock, and that's an evolution over a a twenty year period. It, it's a it's it's you know different drivers, but it remains tech at its heart. Um, and, and I think you're right. You know, tech will change and the constituents will change, but the concept's not going away. I mean, we haven't even got to, I mean, AI is still new. And I was reading yeah, last yeah. evening, you know, next is robotics. I mean, like we, we're only just starting in, in, in some ways. What some folks will notice is that there's something, I'm going to back a slide because it shows it better. This is yep. a pure infotech. For example, there's no Amazon, there's no Meta, there's no Alphabet because they are respectively consumer discretionary. And communication, yeah. so they then get dropped out. To give you, uh, yeah, hundred uh, percent, Simon. To may, maybe just to touch on one point, so you mentioned about gaming. Just to give to put into context uh, the size of the revenue in gaming. Yeah, yeah. If you look at ten cents revenue in just derived just from gaming in China, that is greater than putting the revenue of Standard Bank and First Rand together. 
<laughs> Standard Bank's revenue plus percent is not is not as big as just gaming revenue derived by Tencent in China on its own. So, uh, so just to put into scale how big the magnitude of operations of some of these companies are, and, and as you mentioned, Nvidia gaming is just is just one of them. They're still in the manufacture manufacturing yeah. space, which which is uh, you know which powers AI, which powers all of this gaming. Um, but sorry, just to bring it back to to some of these stocks. So even though um, uh, Meta, for example, does not, does not feature in the infotech, if you look at a stock such as Broadcom and Salesforce, mm -hmm. they are both they are both partners of Facebook or of of Meta platforms. Uh, they are both so so Salesforce, for example, is involved in how um, information speaks to each other and how the information is captured and then delivered from a user front point of view. So, so how your data is, is then captured and utilized and stored uh, from Facebook. So Salesforce is highly correlated and highly linked gotcha. to Meta, for example. So you're still getting some, some of that exposure read through from, uh, from some of that communication coming through, even though it's, it's pure infotech, infotech uh, stock. Broad, Broadcom, for, for example, as well, is one of uh, Meta's key partners in in developing AI chips. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're still getting some of the some of the big hitters that are sitting in in communications, for example, still having some feature by some link and some partner in information to technology coming through in, into this tech space. Um, so yeah. that's why on the chart, I uh, we, we, this chart that that this that the slide that sorry the slide that you that we had up in terms of exposures. Um, you'd see that as the, the sectors are, oh, are split. Mm. Yeah, sorry, that's the one. So the sectors between the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 are, are split between the key or, or, or identified by the key sectors. Uh, NASDAQ, you can see it's a deriving about half of its exposure from, from information, information technology. The rest is consumer discretionary uh, communication, et cetera. Uh, and similarly on, on the S&P. Uh, the the column in the middle the the infotech um it's clearly it's it's a hundred percent infotech so there's no point really putting up that pie yeah. chart uh, so I I split it up between the the sector one or the industries uh, you can see you're getting you getting exposure to semiconductors you're getting exposure to software you're getting exposure to chip manufacturing you're getting exposure to electronic components um, so it's very very core in this this new boom and AI revolution. Uh, machine learning revolution, cloud storage dev revolution. Uh, so you're really getting uh, this groundbreaking technology exposure uh, in that in that in index. I, I take the point on that, and and of course, I mean, you know, and people think Meta. I mean, they they're actually going quite big on AI. They solved their, their advertising problem after Apple introduced uh, uh, sort of privacy restrictions on the iPhone. Um, they've got their Llama three, which is an open source and and frankly, an astoundingly good. Uh, AI as well. We, we, when we think AI, we kind of tend to think open AI, Microsoft, uh, NVIDIA, but but there's there's a ton else happening. I mean, Salesforce undoubtedly is 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 is, is utilizing a, a ton of that. I want to touch on 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 some of the performance. You sent some charts. I'd mentioned around the yeah. ETFs, but yeah, we're looking at S and P, Nasdaq, and and the Infotech. Um, Five years, I mean, no no real surprises, I suppose. Uh, uh, do, doing you know w w well ahead. Yeah, very well ahead. And if we look at those numbers, so you know, coming coming down to what we mentioned earlier, the differences uh, between a Nasdaq and an and an Infotech index. Uh, generally, uh, you know, when, when most of investors think of of uh, technology sector, Nasdaq is generally the go to name. Yeah. Uh, but you can see that when you isolate it purely to information technology, which is what the Infotech gives you. Uh, how big those differences in performance actually actually comes out. So over five years, you would have earned if you invested a hundred thousand rand, instead of earning a hundred fifty thousand uh, over five years, that difference would have been two hundred thousand. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 massive. And that's just five year difference between uh, the two indices. Uh, if you look at the ten year, that number becomes um, you know a lot more dramatic, right? So so cumulatively again here. Uh, earning four hundred thousand on your on your hundred thousand initial investment compared to six hundred thousand, uh, there's a massive difference. So, you know, generally, and you would think an index is quite um, a generic exposure uh, to to underlying securities. 
uh, but I guess it's it's what this highlights is very important to fully understand what you are getting exposure to, and fully understand the the uh, rules put in place in in designing and manufacturing an index and what the exposure does to, and that exposure does translate into yeah. into real performance at the end of the day performance and, differences. And what we can see here, which is worth highlighting, and we experienced it. In, in 22 in the tech bear market, um, it, it was tougher being in a in a tech uh, orientated than it was in the S&P because, of course, a lot less tech there. Truthfully, yeah. they both hit bear markets. Uh, 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 NASDAQ, the Infotech, uh, S&P 500, both did worse. But, but that's the nature of the beast. And it's to your earlier point yeah. around sort of having that core and that satellite, um, they're going to be drawdowns. But over time, I mean, you can see it here, but I can promise you in a decade that that 2022 bear market is going to kind of have faded into history. Now, 100% Simon, and, and it's investing 101, right, diversification. So by no means, even though we've got this great performance up here on screen, we're saying that this is what it's going to look like in future. Uh, it is overall, it, it still comes down to overall uh, invest investment portfolio diversification and construction is still very important. These are just designed to give you some niche niche exposure in markets that could be booming, and as you've seen, that have boomed historically. Um, it does not is there's no one silver bullet. It's a long term exposure in a well well diversified investment portfolio. It's still it's still rule number one. Yeah, um, um, and and to your point about drawdowns, uh, if we look at um, you know COVID for example, yeah, uh, there was a very sharp sharp draw, drawdown, and three months later. Uh, the market was almost back at the same level before the crash happened. Um, it speaks to being invested through uh, through uh, the, the the entire period. So it, this we're not talking about trading here. We're talking about we're not talking about short term trading, but rather uh, advocating for long term investments is to be in the market uh, through these cycles through the risk. Um, uh, and as you, as you mentioned earlier, uh, it comes with risk, but overall, uh, the higher risk should give you a higher risk return profile. Um, and that's what we advocate for here. Yeah, and I remember that V-shaped recovery in 2020 was quite astounding. I want to move on to some of the others, but a last point here. Yeah. Distributions of both the ETF 500 and the ETF 5IT is zero, and that's because they are being reinvested at source. I've had some folks say, where yep. do my dividends go? You get the dividends, but you get them in a NAV, a net asset value uplift, rather than than than, than cash yeah. in your hand. And and again, these aren't uh, these aren't designed uh, to give you income. They're yeah. designed for growth. They're designed for growth. So therefore, they are uh, those distributions, the dividends are reinvested in that growth sector. Uh, if you're looking for income, there's there's other there's fixed income securities, uh, money market securities, which is which is designed for that purpose, uh, which again speaks to to the overall diversification and having all of these building blocks included in in your overall investment portfolio. Yeah, no, 100% and, and how you put that portfolio on. Let, let's still stay in global, but let's touch on, on some of the off, other offerings from, from, from One Invest. Um, you, you've got, uh, uh, it, it, I don't say, it, it, it's, it's an SRI, so it, 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 I was going to say generic, but it's not because it's got some, some, some clever overlay on it. And then, of course, the Asia as well, the EM Asia. Uh, let's touch on, on some of those. The, the social responsible, uh, sorry, socially responsible investment index. Yes. And this is an interesting one because, it 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 excludes uh, uh, sort of things that are, for want of a bad phrase, simply just not cool. And and you know you, your point here is reduced fossil fuel index. Yeah, yeah. So so Simon, how this is different to your MSCI World uh, parent index selection universe being MSCI World, so your developed yeah, yeah. market stocks, uh, but it it completely excludes um, stocks that are involved in nuclear weapons, for example, uh, controversial weapons, alcohol, gaming. It completely removes them from the index. Um, so you'll see the, the, the top 10 stocks in this index versus the top 10 stocks in the MSCI being very different. Yeah. Uh, because it doesn't just downweight securities like a lot of ESG uh, indices does. It completely excludes and removes them. So the point of this index is if you are really serious about doing the right thing, um, and if that's if you want to invest on on values, uh, this is the serious player in that space where it completely removes any exposure to to stocks involved in any of those call it sin stocks for mm -hmm. for the lack of a better word. Uh, and you would think that that 
performance uh, somewhat gets constrained when you do that sort of construction. Um, and we've that there's always been a debate over the last few years is does doing the right thing come at a cost of performance? That index over five years and over 10 years, if you look at the cumulative return, has actually outperformed the MSCI world. So yeah. it's it's a small outperformance, but it's it's still meaningful. It's three and a half percent on a five year cumulatively and 16 percent on a 10 year. So you can do the right thing and still have performance in your portfolio. Yeah, that's what all the data, I've spoken to tons of people, all the data says that that doing the right thing actually makes you money as well, which is, I yeah. mean, fortunately, because it would be terrible if it didn't, but it, yeah, yeah. It, it's Tesla in there. I mean, it, it's Nova Nordisk, it's a, ASMO, which is, I actually was chatting around them on my show this morning. They kind of like the shovels in the AI space in that they they provide lithograph, I forget the exact, and, and, and they're the only ones in the little Dutch company, which most of us had probably never heard of just a couple of years ago. Yeah. And and to touch on your point about distributions earlier, this uh, fund actually does pay your distribution on a quarterly basis, so yeah. it does tick that box as well. Um, and and maybe just quickly on on the on the Asia, this is yeah. uh, again looking at yeah giving you Asian exposure uh, to the big stocks in there, and you can see it's quite vibrant areas such as uh, or very, uh, vibrant geographies such as India, Indonesia, Malaysia, etc. Uh, and again, a lot of the the big hitting companies there seem to be tech or some sort of tech derivative. So I want semiconductor manufacturing, for example, uh, you know, manufacturing big chips uh, that that uh, involved in the conductor, big chip manufacturing involved in or linked to a lot of the larger industries in the U.S. Uh, features quite strongly there. Tencent from the gaming revenue mm -hmm. point of view that I just mentioned as well. So all of them pay, playing very strongly in that uh, AI revolution space. That was what struck me with it, and I I remember when when this uh, ETF was first listed, and and I've never held it, but I've I've kept an eye on it for a long time because it did strike me almost as the 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 whereas the 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 ETF five IT the Infotech is kind of like classic traditional Western tech. This is almost Eastern Asian sort of tech. It's still tech. I mean, even Reliance, which is obviously out of India, uh, Alibaba, Samsung. It's a different slant on tech, and there's no Apple, there's no Microsoft, of course, but yep. it's a, a kind of tech-centric, I suppose, in a sense. And and, and to the point, in many cases, uh, at, at, at much lower valuations than what we see in the, the, the U.S. listed. Yeah, 100%, Simon. And, and that was our thoughts behind listing this ETF, uh, was ultimately we want to provide key building blocks that an investor can utilize uh, in a well diversified portfolio, uh, and we saw this as as being one of those key building blocks from exposure to growth in firstly a different geography, uh, yeah. as well as some other niche industries uh, versus your mainstream uh, US, as you mentioned, US and Europe. Yeah, and without having a, a yeah, so some folks say particularly emerging market they want concentration risk. I always think stepping back and getting a couple of territories often a a, a much better bet. And then you've got and, the and if you don't if, if it's difficult to have a handle on exactly which country which industry is exactly. going the next boom is going to come from. So this is what we aim to do is to give you broad based exposure to that, and you will get some exposure and some performance coming through if there's a breakthrough from one of those industries. Yeah, no, and I'm always the 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 Johnny come lately. I, I notice India when it's boomed. I notice Japan when it's happened. Um, <laughs> whereas this kind of builds it in for you. Although Japan, truthfully, I was watching that because I vaguely remembered the peak of 1989, and I couldn't believe an index really was going to take what 35 years to get to get back to it. You then got the ICUS Treasury Short Bond Index, and I remember when this came out. And I spoke to your colleague uh, Johan Rasmus, and we're going to be chatting with him next month around commodities. Okay. I spoke to him then about it, and he was like, "You know what? This isn't really uh, going to be a, a, a around a, a, a dividend flows or anything. It's it's going to be sort of kind of tracking rand against the US dollar." That, of course, has changed with with. I mean, the ten year what. I think the U.S. tenure of four point seven percent again. Yeah, and even the the short term, even the short term Fed's funds rate is around four um, yeah. percent, and this is ultimately what this fund aims to do. So it's designed to to be a money market equivalent uh, of the of the dollar. So you get the full U.S. dollar uh, dollar rand exposure, mm -hmm. but you then get that additional pickup or yield from the short term securities of the short term Fed funds rate. 
So the yield on this portfolio is around 3.8 3 to 3.9% in dollars at the moment. So you're actually earning the dollar rand return and an additional coupon of around 3.8%. Uh, so it's and and it's, it's only exposure to U.S. Treasuries and short-term Treasuries. So your risk is is very limited. I mean, U.S. the Treasuries considers a, a risk, considered your risk-free rate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So ultimately, if if you're looking to park, uh, if you're looking for currency exposure, both either short-term or long-term, and and dollar being your your point of reference, it's almost a no-brainer to rather have exposure to this fund than holding spot dollar, spot USD. Uh, just to earn that additional pickup, and you get the same the same liquidity that you would get from from any any currency as well. Yeah, and I've I mean I've got some some money in offshore in US dollars in offshore, and they're still not paying me interest. I mean I got it when interest was yes. zero. I understood why not, but uh, at this point in the world, you would think perhaps it would come through. Yeah. One and, question... and you're getting a you're getting a semi annual uh, distribution yeah. out of this as well. So yeah. you're, you're so getting some money. And... To... And, and generates one of the questions coming through are these all in the the tax free I, I no reason why they're not all in the no reason the why they're account. not yeah yeah they, yeah they all should be in the tax free yeah yeah, yeah. folks if you've got any questions uh, you're welcome to drop them into the q a box uh someone's asking about commodities we're going to be chatting with johan erasmus around that next month 28 the day before uh voting and if i can find my chat i will send a link to that there you can go. The bookings are open. We'll talk commodities then. Dran, I want to come back to sort of a broad picture, which is the the sort of offshore onshore debate. And and the one thing I always try and impress upon people, yeah, you know, it's not it's not even being about about you know being worried about South Africa and lack of GDP and the like. We've just got such concentration risks. We live here. We work here. Our jobs are here. Our our, our motor cars are here. Our homes are here. Um, offshore, if 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 more than anything, is just diversifying concentration risk. Completely agree, Simon. And to our point earlier, you you don't know where the next growth sector is going to come from. Uh, yeah. It could be local. It could be offshore. It could be specifically west. It could be specifically east. Uh, you know, therefore, the the more the bigger your basket, the bigger your choice, uh, and ultimately, the bigger your chances of. Uh, it's like I guess if laying out uh, chips on a roller table, the more of the board you cover, the more <laughs> likely you are to to. Uh, I shouldn't probably be using a gambling analogy. In <laughs> hey, but, you went but there, but it's a good analogy. <laughs> <laughs> you get my point. I mean, to yeah. give you to give you an idea, so this this stock, this super, super microcomputer that I mentioned earlier, it's been in existence for over a decade. Yeah, and and has not hit anyone's radar in over a decade, and in one quarter, two hundred and fifty percent plus. Yeah, return. Yeah, you yeah. again, you don't know where the next big boom is going to come from, and and to your point earlier about you know, we work here, we earn rands. The beauty about these funds is that it is locally listed, it is in inward listed, so yeah. you can you can buy and sell them in rand. And you, as an individual, you don't even need to use up your offshore allowance or capacity. You don't even you're not externalizing any any rents. Um, so you don't utilize any of your offshore allowance in buying these uh, locally. And again, it ticks the box off of the tax free savings account as well. Yeah, no, that's it. And I, I, I put them in tax free. It's a great place to have them. Uh, Ronald was asking liquidity of these ETFs, and and that's one of the misconceptions. You might look at an ETF and you might see yo no trade today. And they might not yeah. have been trade today, but there's always a market maker who's basically sitting a little bit either side of the fair value and adjusting that pretty much in real time. So there's the potential for li the liquidity uh, if you so need to either get in or out. 100% on the head there, Simon. And that's always been my gripe with liquidity. It's not just a reference of how much is traded. How much is traded is just how much people have decided to buy or sell on that day. Yeah. It actually, it's actually more important to to have depth of your liquidity. So bids and offers on both sides uh, at size and at close to fair value as you can. Uh, and these index, uh, these uh, these index products, these ETFs, uh, all reference uh, massively broad, broad global indices, as you can see. Uh, so their underlying is as liquid as any of these broad-based securities and indices are. Uh, so it's as liquid as those underlying as any of those underlyings are. Yeah, and so I would I would have no concern yet. See, no concern on liquidity, um, and in fact, I personally have uh, a line in communi communications with the market makers. So if there's ever an issue, uh, I've also got eyes on it as well to make sure that that we've got business offers on screen and it's a regulatory requirement as well. 
Yeah, uh, and certainly, you know, I, I have some small positions in small cap stocks, and their liquidity can be, truthfully, sometimes an absolute nightmare. In in my twenty odd years of ETFs, there's never there's never been an issue with with liquidity. There's always been availability. James is coming back to a point that we made uh, up front with the, uh, uh, the the infotech, which he says not concerned around that thirty five percent. Has it been thought to reducing the top weighting? Uh, Ryan, it goes back to what we said. I mean, your your the infotech is a part of an entire portfolio. Um, it is capped at thirty five. Yes, it adds a little bit, you know, it, it certainly adds some concentration risk within that ETF. But if you look sort of a holistic view of a portfolio, that will then be downweighted because there'll be other assets that you're holding in other ETFs. Yep, completely agree, Simon. And and if you start to apply stringent rules and lower that cap, uh, you start to probably get close to a NASDAQ. Uh, or if yeah, you broaden point. the you broaden the sector, you start then to get close to, you know, the weights of the S and P five hundred, which then makes it that makes that index no different to the S and P five hundred exposure in terms of big names. So that again, to your point, that is what this is ultimately designed to do: is to give you that real core exposure to that sector, to then clip on or add on to your to your core holding. Yeah, that that, that concentration is is a feature, not a bug. It, it's 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 a design. Exactly, it's yeah. specifically designed for that. Yeah, uh, a question coming through from Anon saying, "What about uh, uh, impact on BRICS on on US dollar?" As long as I have been in the markets, and that's a long time, there's been talk around the end of the dollar. It will probably happen one day, but I think it's going to be a long, long way away. The dollar is yep. the currency of reserve, and and its biggest feature is that we trade all the commodities in it. And I, I remember there was a a talk of a, of a Middle Eastern oil exchange in the early 2000s that never really went anywhere. There's always talk that China wants to trade commodities and, and, and remember, it, 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 the dollar remains the reserve currency of the world and will do so for a lot longer. I think we'll always have something else that comes in between to to distract any anybody from changing the entire system away from dollars. <laughs> There'll always be a war, a black swan event, something that derails that ever happening. Um, yeah. It's such a massive change to financial markets across the world. Um, I, I don't think I'll see it in my lifetime, if I'm frank. No, I don't think so either. I mean, it, it certainly gives the US huge advantage, but you know, it is what it is. And you've got to go back to Bretton Woods if you, Bretton Woods, if you want to undo it. And uh, that's not a massively viable there at all. Folks, I'm not seeing any more questions coming through. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to uh, park it there. As I said, video will be up uh, late this afternoon. You'll find the video nice and simple. Uh, and we are going back next month. Next month, we're going to be talking on the commodities. And then month after, which is, and I'm going to get my months right, June, we're going to be back for the third time, and we're going to be looking at, at income, uh, REITs, bond funds, and all of those. Ryan, really appreciate your time today. Uh, any uh, closing remarks from you? Yeah, thanks, Simon. Uh, have me back anytime. I'll, I'll be more than ready. Appreciate it. But uh, again, I think uh, just in, in closing, just like to highlight again that this this is not a portfolio, not a fund that should be core of your portfolio your core equity holdings yeah. this is just a very niche exposure so please be be aware of of that risk that there could be large drawdowns as well as as large increases in price uh, so use it use it for for that and not for parking all of your eggs within it yeah, use an MSCI Global or a, a, a S&P 500 as your core. And then you know, even the, um, the, the EM Asia is a is a satellite around that. Uh, Ryan Basidio from One Invest, appreciate your time. Ladies and gents, really appreciate your time today. Uh, everyone look after yourself. And as always, if you can, look after somebody else as well. Thanks all.